Tonight is May the 26th, 2019. <clears throat> I've got a quickie video tonight I want to post, mostly uh, to get you guys' thoughts on this, on what to do with this. This is a little LED light bar that I got in today and uh, built it. It comes in kit form. I did not realize it was such a kit, but uh, I'm, I guess I'm actually kind of pleased with myself that I still have the steady hands of a surgeon and I, uh, and I was able to put this thing together. It comes uh, in a bag of parts. I, I, don't, I don't. I bet you can't even see these parts in here. But let me show you in here. Those are the si those are the resistors. Can you see that resistor in there? You have to actually solder them in on both sides. And there's about 70 of them. There's 60 of them because there's 60 uh, segments there. And then there's some others for the voltage dividers and what. Then it's got these huge transistors right here. That great big thing in there, right there, right there in the middle. That's a transistor. And, to top it all off, look what I had to learn to read. I had to learn to read Chinese. No, but seriously, uh, if you figure it out in here, you figure it out. I actually had to get out a microscope to be able to make sure that I was using the right components. But anyway, enough of that. This thing is amazing. It actually works. I can calibrate it. Uh, you know, I posted a video, I think just last night, on this guy right here. Well, I put a capacitor across it at 0.47, and now it works. It's flat from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And what I do is I run some little Excel programs. Uh, here it is right here. Here's, there's part of it. This is the segment number, and this is the power that responds to it, and it actually does. I've been playing with this thing for hours. It actually does obey the square law of power as it relates to voltage. This is actually a voltmeter calibrated in watts. For example, I've got it calibrated right now for 30 watts full scale, and I'll run it up to 30 watts. Go over here, try not to kick the camera. We'll use this little meter right here because it works. We're running up to 30 watts. I want to get it as close as I can. I want to do this right. It's actually it's actually quite accurate. That says 30. Terrible. Okay, there we go. 30. The the the, uh, the uh, digital one says the same thing. See, the digital one says uh, 30.34, right there. Okay, so we've got it full scale. 30 watts to the tip top. Okay, let's reduce it to uh, 20 watts. I'm watching my little analog meter there. Put it right there. It's close to be reasonably count on 20. And now, oops, we have to count the segments. I don't know exactly how I'm going to label this thing. See, there's 10 segments per, so there's 10, 20, 30, 40. That's segment 49. It's going up to 49. And if we look in here at segment 49, it says it's... Uh, 20 watts. It works. It actually works. It, 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 it works all the way down to, you know, down at the bottom of 2 watts. I can't say any more for you. It just works. And, and all I'm using right now to calibrate it is this pot right here, this 10K pot. I'm sure I can build, you know, some, some nice uh, two-stage um, attenuators in it like, uh, like this guy right here. And, uh, Make it quite nice. And I'm sure you will be able to read peak power with it too. Peak envelope power. You know what this is leading up to? I still want to measure if there's any difference between the average power and the um, the headroom, if there's how much headroom there is above average power uh, as it relates to uh, hot and cold bias. I'm just sort of obsessed about that. But anyway, <clears throat> I guess I get you guys' thoughts. I'm probably not going to do any more with it tonight. It's already 1:25 a.m. But just, but the, the calibration on it is stunning. It just, it just works. I guess there's, there's, you know, none of this uh, physical, magnetic, average reading compensation, fudging the, the, uh, the scales and all that kind of stuff necessary here. I'll show you again. Let's run it down to something even less. Let's run it down to, say, 10 watts. Okay. 
10 watts is right right there 10 watts now it's got a bunch of different features in it that would be uh, a segment 10 20 30 31 32 33 30 34 is where they both match and one of them is 35 34 and 35 34 right here 35 is right there so it's between 9.6 10.2 watts. I mean, this is not anything that's going to pass the National Bureau of Standards, but it works. And it's got a lot of different kind of features, too. See, I've, I've, actually, I've actually got, uh, there's a little button back here that uh, changes its uh, configuration. I've actually got it holding uh, at the peak. You can change it to that, which is not holding, which is still flickering at the top. You can change it to actually from the middle going outwards. I don't see any purpose in that except for be pretty or something. There it's got those crazy little things dancing upward. I don't see any point in that. There it is, just a single uh, digit. The, the, the highest uh, order digit. And there it is back to uh, where we came from. The, uh, the highest order digit stays lit up the brightest. I like that the most, I think. Either that one or that one. It, sometimes it seems like the both uh, agree a little bit more. I mean, they're just, I mean, the, the, the difference between them is pretty nominal, how they don't agree. I've also tried it on my uh, RF watt meter. This thing is actually quite sensitive. I'd have to do some um, some changes to the attenuator on my RF watt meter because uh, I've been using uh, this thing right here, which I think I'm just probably going to put back. This is what I use on my for my uh, ham radio stuff. It gives me pretty close. You know, when I load it up to about 800 watts, then I can modulate it up to PEP about 11 and a quarter. What do you think, guys? I was thinking about mounting it downward so it's flat in a chassis. Um, I'm open to suggestions in the you know, uh, the attenuator can be just anything we desire, and, and, and it's, there's just not much to it. It's quite a challenge to build this thing, let me tell you. Like I say, I mean, oh my god. I gotta show you just a little bit of it. No, I'm really quite, quite pleased that I can still do this. You know, a long time ago, the early 90s, at that White Sands, when we had, uh, they gave us microscopes and stuff like that to work on tiny stuff. And they figured out pretty quick that we really weren't equipped for it. But look at this. You have to make every one of those solder connections and the resistors, which I can't even see without my glasses on, are right there. You gotta you gotta solder in every one of those resistors, every one of those individual resistors, both sides. And there's resistors here, there's four transistors mounted there, those little transistors I showed you. Oh, this one right here, this one right here is the one I started with, this IC. I watched a little video on it, and I thought, well, if I can solder that on, I can do anything. And what I did is, of course, when I started soldering, that's one of the most beautiful solder jobs I've ever seen, and I even did it. But what I did is, when I started soldering it, of course, the solder was blobbed between them. Everything was bridged. And I said, well, i got to figure out how to clean that up. And I used some really high-quality wick, uh, solder wick. that has got a resin in it, and I just wicked it up. On both sides, and I cleaned it up with like alcohol and and uh, whatever all these solvents I have around here, and it just came out absolutely beautiful. And I said, well, you know what? If I can solder that thing in there, I can get these resistors. This is a crystal. There's a little capacitor right there, uh, and all of those all the bajillion resistors. These components. I was just very careful and uh, put that thing together. It turned out. Uh, Turned out really nice. Yeah, but if you can if you can get that, that, that's the way I put it in there. Just had it perfectly aligned, soldered it so it stay in place, put solder all the way around it, bridged it all together. Everything was, you know, it was like one one piece of solder, and cleaned it up with uh, some of this wick right here. Let me see if I can show you real quick. It's actually a, a small kind of uh, wick. But uh, I'll tell you that all wick is not created equal. No, it's not that. Darn it. I hate it when I can't find things and uh, show you guys. Well, this kind of stuff right here, if you know what I mean. 
I don't know if this is the very piece. I think that is the very piece I used. It doesn't have a, a brand on it. But I know that this has got uh, resin in it. And it works really good. There, there's, there, there's different qualities of, of uh, solder wick, let me tell you. So there you go. What do you think? How should this thing be mounted? This is just a little do lolly they give you to mount it in just to I, I set it in there just to uh, make sure it doesn't lay down on something and get shorted and uh, blow it up I don't know what I've, what I've touched here but I've got it out of whack now how don't I I don't know why it's doing that maybe it uh, needs to power up before there we go looks like it needs to power up before uh, we apply drive to it. And I reckon you can calibrate it for anything you want. Run it all the way back smack up to the top where they're both ticking. And uh, there's the power right there. I've got it just a, 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 a tad over 30 right now. The digital meter says it's 31.67. This one says it's a little bit over 32. Like I say, all I had to add across this to make it work up perfectly at 20 kilohertz, it's as flat as a, as a straight line from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and, and that's all I care about. By the way, I'm using this little uh, uh, Macintosh MA230 channel that I built back in 1977 as a center channel. This, that's just an absolutely amazing performing little amplifier. So there you go. So uh, peak reading watt meter, uh, average reading watt meter. I'm, uh, I'm real pleased with it. What would you do with it? Would you uh, mount it in a chassis and attenuators and I don't know. You, you know, the, it, it, it's really small. I don't, I don't mean to drag this out, but. Uh, see, I printed this in some really tiny font, like font size 6 or something like that. I wanted something to go along beside it, but even even at that font size, which I can't make it print any smaller, it's still too small. It's still too long to put all the segments. I think 60 segments is almost a little bit too much. But you do, it'll have to be accompanied by something like this. But see, if you get down there, just two or three segments, you're measuring. A, I've got this thing truncated it at one decimal place right here, measuring from. Uh, well, it says one and two is zero watts. It rounds off 0.1 watts up to, and uh, this one up to uh, 30 watts for th this this segment number 60 being at the top. There you go.